Hi, and welcome. I'd like you to meet my friends. This is Daisy Dog, the Pomeranian. And this is Coconut, the Maltese. I think Daisy is leaving us for the moment, but Coco may stay with us for a moment because she has a lot to say. And Coco, this is your chance. This is your chance to speak up, Coco, and say whatever it is you have to say to the world. Hmm. Well, maybe she doesn't have all that much to say after all, but she can just sit and listen today. Welcome. This is July 19th, 2014, and I'm Reverend Wilma Wake with the online Swedenborgian community. And I invite you to start a service with us today by lighting a candle and by opening a Bible, if you would like to do this. And I'm so glad that you are here today to worship with us. We are going to start off with our readings for today. And I think <clears throat> that probably Coco is not going to help, but she will sit and be part of our congregation today. I'm going to start with John 12, 23 to 36. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be also. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and glorified it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out, but I, when I am lifted up from earth, will draw all to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Christ will remain forever, so how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. The one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Coco, let's see if we can share the camera a little bit. Yeah, how would, no. Would that work for you, Coco? All right, we'll, we'll see if we can make this work. I, oh, Coco wanting to leave. Okay, Coco, well, thank you for joining us for the time that you did, Coco. So we will go on to the reading from Swedenborg for today. This is from the Arcana. Whenever I have been reading the Lord's Prayer, I have plainly perceived an elevation towards the Lord, which was like an attraction. And at the same time, my ideas were open, and from this there was effected a communication with some societies in heaven. And I noticed that there was an influx from the Lord into every detail of the prayer, thus into every idea of my thought that was from the meaning of the things in the prayer. The influx was effected with inexpressible variety. That is, not the same at one time as another. Hence it was made evident how infinite are the things 
contained in the prayer and that the Lord is present in every one of them. Swedenborg was very clear about how the Lord is present in all prayers all of the time. And we've been talking this summer about poetry as a form of prayer. And it's a beautiful summer. It's a beautiful day today in Maine. Um, I'm out on my front porch. You can maybe see just a few trees off in the background. And I'm really greatly enjoying the summer weather. And for me, it seems like a perfect time to sit on my porch and read some poetry. And Frost is one of the poets I really, really like. Do you enjoy the poetry of Robert Frost? Do you know the connections that he had with Swedenborgians? Let me share a little bit of that with you. He was born in 1874 in San Francisco, named after General Robert E. Lee. His father was a Confederate, a Universalist, and an active alcoholic. The Frosts hadn't lived for very long in San Francisco, and Mrs. Frost was a Presbyterian, but she couldn't seem to find a church community she felt comfortable with. Uh, but she enjoyed reading books of the UU minister, the Unitarian Universalist minister, Thomas Starr King. So they attended King's former congregation for a while, and she started reading Emerson, and soon she moved from Emerson to reading Swedenborg. And then Frost's mother joined the Swedenborgian church in San Francisco. And that's right. The mother of Robert Frost joined the San Francisco Swedenborgian church. And on their website, you can learn more about their history. Well, Robert was growing, and, and when he got into second grade, uh, Mom had him baptized by the Swedenborgian minister there, uh, Reverend John Darty. And not long afterwards, Robert started hearing voices. And this is not, I don't think, a normal occurrence when one has been baptized in the Swedenborgian church, but it happened to Robert. And when he told his mother, she said that he had second sight, that she was saying to him that, that he was very sensitive to picking up things from uh, other levels of reality. Oh, that is Coco. Coco is on guard right now and letting us know that a car is passing by on the road. But back to Frost and his mother. She encouraged him not to talk about hearing voices with other people, uh, but to just be aware that he had a special talent um, as she did. Then in 1885, Frost's father died of TB, and again the Swedenborgian minister, Reverend Darty, did the service. And then um, Robert's mom moved with him and his little sister to Massachusetts to live with his father's family. Um, and he hated the Frost household, but he did start attending Universalist services with his grandparents. After a while, Mom moved the kids to Salem, New Hampshire, because she was teaching school there. So Robert grew and ended up going to Harvard for a while. He fell in love with another student there, Eleanor White. And in 1895, Frost was a reporter in Lawrence, and he married Eleanor. Neither of them belonged to a church, but... Reverend John Haynes, who was the Swedenborgian minister in Salem, performed the ceremony in December of 1895. And the service was held in the school where Robert's mother um, had her private school and was teaching. Turns out that the Swedenborgians of Lawrence were meeting in the same rented downtown office space where the Frost family also lived. And most of the guests at Frost's wedding were, in fact, Swedenborgians. I just think it's fascinating to know that. In 1923, Frost wrote this, What is my philosophy? That is hard to say. I was brought up a Swedenborgian. I am not a Swedenborgian now, but there is a good deal of it that's left with me. I am a mystic, 
I believe in symbols. I believe in change and in changing symbols. Yet that does not take me away from the kindly contact of human beings. No, it brings me closer to them. Frost died January 29th, 1963, which just happens to be Swedenborg's, uh, Swedenborg's birthday. And we now have beautiful poetry that Robert Frost has left us. And in reading his poetry, I think you'll find a number of Swedenborgian concepts in them. Love as the essence of reality, correspondences, um, the whole process of regeneration and spiritual growth. If you would like to come on to our website, you can hear some of Frost poems read by Frost himself in some uh, videos that we have on the site. So I invite you to come visit us at www.swedenborgencommunity.org to read more of this service in more detail and also to find many other resources that are there. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the poetry of Robert Frost. Thank you for all of the beautiful poetry and art that is left by so many people in so many ways. Thank you for the poetry, the music, the dance, the art that lives inside the heart of every one of us. Help us to access those beautiful parts of ourselves and help us to remember that poetry can be prayer. Amen. You now may wish to blow out your candle and you may wish to close your Bible. And if you are free any Sunday evening, join us at 9 p.m. Eastern for a prayer service online. And every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern, we have a chat. So hope to see you online sometime. And thank you very much for joining us for today's service. Blessings to you.